Figure it out. Hello, this is Adam Corlick from Figure It Out Productions. The following video is a video of some kind, and I hope you enjoy it. Hey guys, it's Adam here, and today we're going to be talking about the OLED Nintendo Switch, which I wasn't really planning to do a video on this, but I did a live stream recently and a whole bunch of people were asking me, like, can you talk about it? So I was like, okay, all right, well, we'll do a little video on it. So uh, basically, I posed the, the following question to you that I said right there in the title, like, are we surprised? <laughs> like, what were you expecting? You know, it's, it's Nintendo. Um, so let's, let's talk about this. Basically... If you're unaware, Nintendo recently announced an upgraded version of our friend here, the Nintendo Switch, uh, which had long since been rumored a Nintendo Switch Pro and so on and so forth, where everybody has these fantasy ideas of a, a 4K, I've even seen people say 8K native little thing that can do like, you know, it can <laughs> it can play games like that, it's backwards compatible with everything, it can grant wishes, like it's ridiculous, like some of the things that people put out there about the possibility of an upgraded version of the Nintendo Switch. Um, meanwhile, Nintendo actually goes ahead and says, like, yeah, okay, here it is. And it just disappoints everyone on the planet. Now, I just want to explore and say again, what were you expecting? It's Nintendo. Now, that being said, let's talk about what they actually did change and then explore why I think people are disappointed by this, other than the obvious of it's not the fantasy thing I thought it would be. Um, so the upgraded version of the Nintendo Switch is actually not all that different from the pre-existing one. This here is the launch model from March of 2017. I've had it since the day it came out, and it's served me quite well, but, you know, I also use it docked. I very rarely ever play it portably. However, Nintendo has decided to make certain changes, right? So the first thing they did that's the most obvious, because it's in the name, it's literally called the OLED Nintendo Switch, they changed up the screen. Now the screen will be a new screen that is an OLED screen, and it will be slightly bigger than the one that's sitting here on this table. Now the actual dimensions of the portable have not changed. All that's changed is, as you can see, hopefully, um, and you probably know if you use a Switch, there's an inherent black border around there. A lot of that's going to go away, thus allowing the screen size to be slightly bigger. So it'll have a nicer screen that's slightly bigger. Cool. It'll also have better speakers installed, so it'll have better sound. Presumably they will have done away with certain hardware defects, the things like where it caused bending and so on and so forth, although I haven't heard anybody talk about that in a long time. Uh, it also is probably more hack-proof because some of the early ones, particularly like this version, you can hack very easily. I'm sure Nintendo addressed that a while ago as well, but you have to believe that they've done even more with the newer ones, right? Uh, so those are some of the surface changes. Internally, under the hood, the base model only had 32 gigabytes of internal storage, which was anemic and small even when it was first announced. Uh, the newer one will have 64 gigabytes of internal storage, which is not really that big of a factor because... The base model, as well as the new one, have always supported micro SD cards for expanded storage. I think, and I could be wrong about this, but I think one of the things that actually makes that somewhat significant is that there are a bunch of games on the Switch that require downloads just to start the game, which because that's the era we live in. However, because of how limited the storage capacity of the Switch actually is, it's very possible to run into a situation where the download can be bigger than the internal memory of the device. Thus, you have to have an SD card just to play the game, even in its most basic form. I do think, however, if you have a 64 gigabyte edition, that problem would be gone, uh, at least on a, every single individual game basis. Of course, when you have multiple games, that problem stacks. But technically, as far as I know, there is a situation where if you do not own an SD card and you do own a Nintendo Switch, there are some games that you straight up just can't play because the internal memory is simply not big enough. I believe this would solve that issue, but if you have an SD card, then it isn't an issue anyway. But whatever. Uh, so there's obviously there's that. Um, I mentioned the sound and the battery life is also going to be better. The original model, I believe, boasts uh, the possibility of a three to seven hour battery life, depending on how you go about using it, brightness settings, all that. The new one, I believe, now claims like four to ten hours on the same basis. So better battery life, better screen, better sound. Overall, what they really did was improve the portable experience. As far as the potential docked experience, not a lot changed. In fact, the only thing that really changed was the dock itself. Um, which instead of using the old dock that had two USB 2.0 ports uh, externally as well as one 3.0 internally, they essentially got rid of the internal 3.0 port and replaced it with a native broadband port, which sounded pretty good, except 
pointless. This is a thing. I've had this forever. Like, this is just a simple USB to broadband adapter. These, I remember getting one of these with the original Wii. It's just a simple idea is you plug it into that port, do a hardline Ethernet connection, and the device recognizes it as a hardline connection. They have essentially removed the need to do that, but they also sacrificed a USB port in the process. And the only reason I can think of that they might have got rid of one in exchange for the other, maybe other than just like cost or whatever, is it's possible, I'm not an engineer, but it's possible the switch itself has some sort of bus limitation on how many different uh, communication devices it can interpret at the same time. In other words, you can't have a native ethernet connection plus potentially three USB devices because the switch itself would not understand that. That's my guess as to why they just got rid of one in favor of the broadband port. Probably because the broadband port concept is probably one of the most highly utilized functionalities of the USB ports. But that's just a guess. Aside from that, they really didn't change anything else. That, that's pretty much it. I believe it comes out in October and re retails for like 350 bucks. I know a lot of people are disappointed because it also didn't address like the Joy-Con issue. That was like a legit concern. Like they should have fixed that and said like, oh, they won't have the drifting thing anymore. I guess they're not addressing that one. But aside from that, it's really, that's it. So I've seen tons of people out there who are super mad about this because, it, I mean, basically the history with the Switch Pro is that even before it launched, as I mentioned, we knew the specs and we knew it was anemic, like 32 gigabytes of internal storage back then was a joke, um, back when we first heard about it in 2016, I think it was. Um, but basically, People have been saying like we're they're gonna make like a a big upgraded version. I can I can feel it. You know, Sony did it with the PS4 Pro, Microsoft did it with the Xbox One X, so they're totally gonna do it. And the thing I ask is like, why do you think that? Nintendo really doesn't have a history of really caring what their competition does. They haven't for like the last 20 years. Uh I mean we're like 15 to 18 years. I mean, ironically, and I'll put this out there just because it is true. Ironically, Nintendo actually started the whole concept of mid-generational upgrades when they went from the 3DS to the new 3DS and they put extra hardware under the hood so that it was able to play games that the base version could not. But that was a very small situation, though technically, yes, they did do that. But it was Microsoft and Sony that felt the need uh, with the PS4 and Xbox One to say, our platforms are somewhat anemic and we need to upgrade them, hence you got PS4 Pro and Xbox One X. But their situation was kind of different, which is people go to Sony and Microsoft, at least within the console gaming sphere, and expect, like, the next-gen experience. But if you go back in time and kind of look at it, we all knew that those consoles were out of date before they even shipped, the Xbox One in particular. And so they didn't have much of a choice. Like, if they didn't do that, they would have been, like, really, really far behind. And they're mostly, and don't forget, they are technology companies, so for them, the goals are a little different. And people look at it like Nintendo's their competition, which is technically accurate, but not really. Nintendo always goes to the beat of their own drum, and in their case, they're like, we don't need to do any of that. The Switch itself has been super successful in the way we want it to be. All we've done is small, revisional upgrades. So no, this is not your Switch Pro. What this is, is like your Switch Model 2, which is not a new thing. Your slim model concept is not new. I mean, Atari did it with the 2600. Sega's done it with the, you know, the Genesis 2, Super Nintendo, SNES Jr. There's, there's a long list of this. But if you want something vastly more recent, let's again look at the Xbox One. Do you remember the base VCR giant model? It had its flaws, but then they were like, okay, we're going to do an, a slim model. And the slim model was basically just an Xbox One with a couple of little revisional changes. It was smaller, it, you know, ran cooler, it used less power, uh, it got rid of the Kinect port, um, but it had additional benefits, like it had native 4K Blu-ray support. Um, you know, stuff like that. It, it had, typically, not in all cases, but typically it had a better hard drive too, you know, larger sizes. So they just kind of made some slight improvements here and there and gave you your upgraded version. That's all this is. The OLED Switch is just that. So people were expecting Nintendo's version of an Xbox One X and they got Nintendo's version of an Xbox One S. That's, that's really all it is. And so it's kind of an all to do about nothing. Um, so, if you are out there and you're thinking that, I, I'm sorry for you, but it is, to me, as someone who kind of likes to study video game history, I find it kind of fascinating because we're now at a point where I think you really have two bases of people that I think came to that conclusion. 
One is, let's just keep it real, the, the younger people. We have... <laughs> We have had enough time since the launch of the Xbox One and PS4 that there's like a generation that grew up on that. When those consoles came out, like if there was a kid who was born the year that those consoles came out, they're now eight years old. And that's not necessarily your target range for those platforms. So that means there was a bunch of kids who were like five or six or whatever when those things came out, and now they're in high school. So like their formative years are really revolve around the whole idea that when a console comes out a few years later, they do a big upgrade version. And that's not normal. Whereas I would think the other side of that, the other group of people would really just be the people who are just kind of casually, you know, excited by the hype and the vague possibility because they don't necessarily pay super attention to like how the video game industry works. But basically what it means is I understand that, you know, Microsoft, Sony and Nintendo are the video game guys. So they're all competitors. So they all have to do the same thing. But what you're not getting is Nintendo doesn't care. <laughs> Like I said, they have not really tried to compete head-to-head -head with their immediate competition since the GameCube. Nintendo gave up direct head-to-head -head comp competition in 2006. It has been 15 years, and obviously that decision was made a couple years prior to that. But really, they have given up on the whole direct competition thing. So just because Sony and Microsoft do it, that doesn't mean Nintendo's going to do it. In fact, it usually means exactly the opposite. So... Hey, <laughs> the Switch itself just surrendered on that on that phrase. Um, oh, and I guess the kickstand, now that I, this kickstand failed. I guess that's another thing. They are going to improve the kickstand, which I guess, as you saw there, actually does need improvement. Um, but yeah, that, that's, that's really all it is. Uh, and you then have to like look at it and say, like, okay, does it make sense for me? If you've never had a Nintendo Switch, then yeah, the OLED model is probably the way to go. Unless you know you're exclusively going to play it in handheld mode, then the light version is probably for you. Which, by the way, did we all just forget that that was already a thing? I don't know. But, um, yeah, or if you just, you know, the more economical route would be to go with the original version, whatever. But if you are like me and you already have one, do you upgrade? Do you change? And that really depends on your usage. If you're the type of person who primarily plays it in a handheld mode and you just like absolutely love that device, yeah, the upgrade might actually make sense for you because the screen will be so much better and the other little handheld perks that go with it, like I said, the sound and all that, will be improved. But if you're literally like me, where you just play it on a television, it has no benefit. As I said, the one benefit would have potentially been this, and it doesn't matter. Um, maybe the internal storage, but that's certainly not enough to spend 350 bucks on a new version of that when I have SD cards. So, yeah, again, I'm not trying to defend Nintendo on this. I'm just kind of saying, like, it was fan hype that got everybody super excited about the possibility of some ridiculous 4K, even 8K version of this thing, which I, I need to put out there, like... Why would you think that Nintendo was going to be able to get a 4K version of the Switch to fit inside of a little tablet? Do you realize, like, technologically speaking, the Switch is a hair above the Wii U in capabilities and below the base VCR model of the Xbox One. A pro version that could run games native 4K, like, consistently, and all the other bells and whistles that you're probably dreaming about, would have to be more capable than an Xbox One X. Like, that is a huge leap. I mean, honestly, if for some reason Nintendo had actually sat down and said, you know what, we are going to do the whole pro thing, where we upgrade it and do this, like, big edition, whatever, instead of just the normal revision, which they did do best case scenario you could have hoped for was like a ps4 like in your pocket like that's honestly like and I'm, i mean base ps4 not even ps4 pro i i just can't see it ever happen i mean that's one of those things where people look at it and they go like on paper yes i want it because i want it to be better and bigger and all this great stuff but you're not thinking about the logistics of like how insane that is and i mean don't forget like look at all the hardware that has to be crammed into this tablet essentially in order to do that it's just not there. It's just not there yet. Um, and Nintendo also doesn't need to do it because it will sell regardless. Like, let's just keep it real about that. So I realize I'm kind of breaking some hearts here when I'm basically saying you will never get a Nintendo Switch Pro in the way you dream about it, but I will, I'll throw you a bone. It's four years in. It's over four years in to the, uh, the life cycle of the Nintendo Switch. In traditional console terms, that's like an entire generation. In fact, because Nintendo is so OG when it comes to gaming, they're just following their normal model, right? 
And so it's not surprising they would come up with a small little incremental upgrade at some point. But what I'm betting, too, is they're getting relatively close to the time in which they announce the successor or get you know close enough to the successor. Um, that being the case, if you study Nintendo's history, this is not a perfect example, but traditionally they like to keep stuff in family groups. Um, to an extent, you can say the NES, SNES, and N64 were a family group. Uh, the Game Boy stuff is a family group. Um, the Wii U era, the GameCube and Wii U era was all a family group. Game Boy Advance, group, or the Game Boy group, the DS group, etc. Um, typically when they keep stuff in groups, with the exception of really the NES, SNES, N64 era, they try to keep stuff together as far as compatibility and then building on to the next thing before they just kind of cut it completely and start fresh. I mean, you can feel the incremental upgrade of going from an NES to an N SNES to an N64, but the GameCube feels like, okay, this is a completely different new beginning. And with the Game Boys, it's the same thing. Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance. They kept building. In that case, they gave you backwards compatibility in addition to additional benefits like, you know, adding color to the Game Boy games and so on and so forth um, that they built into it until they cut it completely and went with the DS line. Initially, they gave you some Game Boy Advance compatibility, but then they just said, okay, we're not doing that anymore. It's all the DS stuff. Now, that family is done, too. Uh, but then when you look at the other consoles, GameCube got built into the Wii, Wii got built into the Wii U, and then they cut it completely. What I'm saying is the Switch is the beginning of that next family. Um, and my guess is the next version of whatever they do that's the real competitor, which, again, is not really a competitor, according to Nintendo, but whatever that is will not only have Switch compatibility built into it, it may even have additional benefits. Like, And let's not get crazy, though. Most Switch games run native at 720p, despite its claims that it does 1080p output, which is at best technically accurate in the sense that it upscales just about everything. Maybe you can hope for their next real platform to do some basic benefits to uh, 720p era Switch games that kind of give you somewhat native 1080p out. That's realistically the best you're gonna get. You're not gonna get the you know the Xbox treatment where it gets like, oh, we downloaded an update and now an OG Xbox game runs in 4K. Like the, Nintendo's not doing that. It's never gonna be a thing. Um, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry to break those hearts, but I, I just I think that's the best case you're ever gonna get. You want to upgrade your Nintendo Switch with better resolution and better color and all that? Put an M Classic on it. Like that's the best you're gonna get as far as a Switch Pro concept. Um, and that hasn't changed, you know. I did a video on it. There's a lot of people who've done videos on that. Like, that's the best case scenario you can really hope for. But that's obviously a completely different thing. In the end, we're all getting upset because they basically announced the Genesis Model 2. That's all it is. I'm sorry. That's all it is. Um, but that said, I'd love to know what you think. Like, is there, any, is there anything I really missed here? Like, some... Big point, like, did Nintendo straight up say two years ago, like, we're totally giving you an 8K version of the Switch? Because I think I would have heard about that. But if I missed it, my bad. Um, but that said, leave your th your comments down below, your thoughts, your opinions. Tell me anything about this. Are you going to get one? Seriously, like, are you going to get one? Do you own one? And are you thinking about upgrading? Is it worth it to you? Etc. I'm genuinely curious what everyone has to say about it. Also, if you could please like, comment, subscribe, I appreciate that. Follow me on all the social media stuff in the description, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Patreon, Discord, all that. I appreciate that as well. You can support the Merch Mart, buy some shirts, whatever. Appreciate that as well. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you all later.